Hi, and welcome back to this final section of the torso muscles. And in this part, we are going to be learning about abdominal wall muscles. So let's go ahead and get started. There's four abdominal wall muscles. Not only are we gonna learn about the muscles, but there are a lot of associated structures that we're going to learn about. So in the midline on each side, there's about a three inch band of muscles that go in a superior inferior direction. And these are your rectus abdominis muscles. So look at the spelling, M-I-N-I-S. A lot of students will put a U-S at the end of both of those words. So it's a U-S on the rectus and an I-S on abdominus. And these muscles, when they contract, as you can imagine, when they get shorter, you would be leaning over forward and that is flexing your trunk. In addition, that they will also compress your abdominal contents like when you are sucking everything in to try to fit into a tight pair of jeans. So the rectus abdominis muscles, they, their origin is way inferiorly at the pubic symphysis and their insertion is way up there in the costal cartilages of some of the ribs as well as the xiphoid process as you can see. So in other words, there's no muscle tendons at the ends of the muscle. What we have instead is we have a really short, so it has a direct attachment to those bones. What we have in addition to those direct attachments are little pieces of tendon interspersed in three areas along the muscle path. And each of those structures is called a tendinous intersection of the rectus abdominis. And what this does is it tethers the rectus abdominis muscle to the undersurface of the anterior abdominal wall and the undersurface of your skin, basically. And this explains why when you do all those sit-ups, all those flexing exercises and the muscle get larger and they're tethered, that's why you have that really prominent four pack or six pack. Okay. Um, also related to the two rectus muscles, it, between the two of them, we have dense connective tissue, which is white and in real life, it's not completely opaque. You can actually see light through it. And that is called the white line or the linea alba. No, you can't write white line, but if you translate linea alba, it means white line or line that's white. All right. So all the other muscles in the anterior abdominal area are going to be lateral to the rectus abdominis muscle. So let's start with the most superficial and then work our way deep. So the most superficial goes in this upper outer to lower inner muscle direction. And it, its origin is from like the lower eight ribs. And then it's going to, and what happens to the muscle tendon, I will be discussing later, okay? So this is your external oblique muscle. And just like we had for intercostals, deep to the external oblique, which goes in this direction, we're going to have a muscle that goes in this direction, and that's going to be called the internal oblique uh, muscle. But in the abdomen, we have a third layer of muscle. So we've done one oblique, we've done the other oblique, so what is left now is to go in a transverse plane. And so the deepest muscle is called the transverse abdominus muscle. So some muscles in some drawings will actually cut windows through the external and internal obliques so that you clearly can see the transverse fibers of the transverse abdominis. Whereas on other models, you need to look on the inside surface of the anterior chest and abdominal wall so you clearly can see the transverse fibers of the transverse abdominis there. So let's take a cross section going through the abdomen and to see what's going on. So posteriorly, you clearly can see the spine with those erector spinae muscles. And as you go laterally, you can see these three muscle layers, the external oblique, the internal oblique, and the transverse abdominis. And if we look all the way anterior, we have the rectus abdominis muscles. Okay. And here at the bottom, this basically is a blow up of all of that. And what I want to focus on are the tendinous portions of these three abdominal wall muscles as they go in an anterior 
direction towards the midline. And what I want you to realize, this is not like a normal muscle, which here we have a broad muscle thing, and then we have a really narrow tendon. What happens on all of these abdominal wall muscles is the tendon comes off the entire width of the muscle. And so we have this broad sheet-like tendon, which is an aponeurosis. So looking at this picture, here we have the external oblique. I'm gonna to go to the side that doesn't have all the, the leader lines so you can see it. So on the left side, there is the external oblique muscle and here is its aponeurosis. And notice its aponeurosis goes anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle and then for, will be forming part of the linea alba. So that happens on both sides. Now let's skip all the way to the deepest transverse abdominis muscle and its aponeurosis goes towards the midline, goes posterior to the rectus abdominis muscle and forms the posterior aspect of the linea alba. And for the middle muscle, the internal oblique muscle, its aponeurosis goes towards the midline and splits where half of it goes anterior to the rectus abdominis and half of it goes posterior to the rectus abdominis. And so those fibers will merge with the fibers of the more superficial and deep muscle and so they all form the linea alba. So when you are looking at the models and cadaver pictures, let's start on the right side of this model. This, as you can see, are muscle fibers going from upper outer to lower inner. So that is the external oblique muscle. You can see the border of the rectus abdominis muscle right here where my arrow pointer is going. So between those two structures, only in here, this is the aponeurosis of the external oblique. As soon as it's anterior to the rectus, it has a name change. So only in this area would you call it the aponeurosis of the external oblique. On the cadaver picture, um, you can see it where I pointed it out here on the left side, and you actually can see it narrower on the right side. So it's we are not including the portion where it is anterior to the rectus abdominis muscle. In a similar fashion, find your opposite angled internal oblique muscle and between the anterior border of that muscle and the lateral border of the rectus abdominis, that's where you're going to find the aponeurosis of the internal oblique. And exactly the same area for transverse abdominis between the transverse abdominis muscle anteriorly and the lateral border of the rectus abdominis muscle. And so to see that on a model, you need to look on the interior surface of the chest and abdominal plate. All right, so those are the three aponeurosis. So what do we call it when those fibers are going either anterior, superficial, or deep to the rectus abdominis muscle? Those are called rectus sheaths. So, the extension of the aponeurosis of the external and internal um, oblique muscles, which is superficial to the rectus abdominis muscle, anteriorly, that's called the anterior rectus sheath. So between the aponeurosis and the linea alba, we call that the anterior rectus sheath, which means on the posterior aspect, we would call it the posterior rectus sheath. So I hope you understood that. If not, go back and look at it again. All right, this is the final structure, I think. For this one, what you do is you find the external oblique, find the aponeurosis of the external oblique and go to its inferior border. And what you will notice is there's actually a line that extends from the anterior superior iliac spine and it goes all the way down to the pubic symphysis, okay? So this area right there where we have that dense connective tissue, that's called the inguinal ligament. And this is the lower modest border. Everything above it's in the torso. Everything below it is considered in the lower extremity. 
Okay. And so for if you've ever seen um, some people who have that deep V cut coming from the anterior superior iliac spine, that is marking the location of the inguinal ligament. Okay. And with that, we are done learning all about our torso muscles. I want to thank you for all your hard work again, and I will see you for the next series of videos.